uh, who's managed to take some time out. Uh, this is Naveen uh, from Confluent. Today we're going to be discussing uh, you know, um, building uh, event-driven APIs. Uh, so I'm sure you've uh, attended some of the sessions which were quite interesting earlier on. Uh, and we'll go through uh, this particular workshop where we'll explore uh, event-driven APIs in specific. Uh, we'll try to understand um, you know, what event-driven APIs are. Uh, how is it different from uh, APIs where we typically have like a request and a response uh, kind of a reply? Uh, and we'll see you know, as to what kind of use cases uh, these uh, you know, kind of fit into. All right, so just a quick uh, logistics check. Uh, if my sh screen is being shared fine, the audio is turned on so that I don't keep uh, rambling to myself. But uh, let me uh, get started with <coughs> uh, how do we build uh, event-driven APIs. Right? So uh, what exactly is event-driven API? So that's something which we need to kind of set uh, the base for. Uh, and then we'll uh, kind of try to understand you know, how we can build uh, even APIs going forward. So if we had to compare it with uh, APIs that most of us are familiar with, which is the traditional request response uh, kind of model where uh, you know we're sending a request to the server, we get a response back and we use that within the application. Uh, so mostly the REST APIs would be uh, what fits into that category. Uh, in the event-driven way, it's slightly different. Uh, so uh, we don't send a request, uh, so to say, to the server uh, in the in the expectation of you know getting a response immediately. Uh, rather, what we do is we establish a communication uh, in a channel with the server, and the server, as and when an event occurs, it would push uh, the events onto the application. So if you had to just compare uh, the two, uh, you would think of the RESTful approach as uh, you know going uh, you know, back and forth uh, to the server to get, uh, you know, what you desire. So typically that would be data points which the application would need. Uh, and in the event-driven way, you can think of uh, continuous uh, delivery of uh, data uh, to the application from the server. Okay. So in other ways to compare uh, these two types would be uh, to think of, you know, the mechanism through which uh, the communication happens. Uh, in the case that the data uh, in the RESTful way, uh, typically an API response is a pull-based approach, where you're, again, sending a request, getting a response back. So that's a pull-based approach. And in the event-driven way, we have a push-based approach where the uh, server is essentially pushing the uh, data points to the application. <clears throat> now, um, how is all of this you know, kind of feasible, right? So it was primarily because of uh, you know, advancements in the way uh, the HTTP protocol was being developed. Uh, so uh, this whole concept of uh, pipelining was something which uh, you know, web applications primarily use. So where the client opens a session, uh, you know, requests the server to establish the session, uh, the server would either authenticate or just authorize the client application to uh, get some response back. Uh, and then you would have <clears throat> You know, back and forth uh, communication between the client and server, depending on the uh, requests uh, which are sent from the client. Uh, and finally, uh, the client can decide to you know close the connection and uh, pretty much say that it's uh, you know ended uh, uh, that particular session. Uh, in the case of uh, you know the advancements which are being made, uh, so it was started off uh, through uh, you know some research work at Google. And they were looking at a protocol called a speedy. Uh, essentially, what they wanted to do was uh, send all the uh, you know overheads of communication in uh, one shot to the server, and then focus on only delivering you know what uh, the client needs uh, when it comes to uh, responses uh, from the server. Right? So in that case, uh, you know, speedy was looking at a way uh, you know to be able to. Uh, you know, get data at uh, with lower latency uh, to the front end applications, and you could primarily use that as a continuous, uh, you know, push based uh, approach, uh, which the server could take. 
Right, so that kind of made it into HTTP uh, 2.0. Uh, so uh, the Speedy protocol, you know, some of that work was uh, kind of transformed into you know what could be used as part of uh, you know HTTP 2.0 as a standard. And with HTTP 2, you basically had this uh, streaming API capability, uh, which you could use uh, to establish continuous communication and so on. All right, so for today's workshop, what we're going to do is go through uh, you know, some of uh, this whole concept of event-driven APIs, but we'll pick a specific use case for it uh, where we're looking at uh, customer 360. Uh, I think that would be something which uh, is quite uh, you know, applicable uh, cross industry as well as cross domain wise. Uh, so typically if you're running a business where uh, you need to update um, you know customers uh, in terms of uh, you know some of the events which are happening on your business side uh, or if the customer uh, uh, takes on some activity through one of the channels uh, that they interact with your business they should be able to um, you know get back uh, you know responses uh, in real time uh, through you know either a mobile application or a web application so we look at this customer 360 uh, example and you know how we can uh, kind of build, um, you know, even driven APIs uh, for a real-time customer 360 uh, kind of use case. Uh, of course, we're going to look at it from a centralized uh, customer 360 view. Uh, but of course, in terms of the use cases, we can expand uh, on uh, things like marketing campaigns, uh, you know, real-time notifications, and so on, uh, which can be used, uh, uh, you know, from this uh, customer 360 view. <clears throat> All right, so specific to this workshop, we'll look at a particular pipeline uh, that we're going to uh, you know, move data from. So we're going to look at uh, you know, two different databases. So uh, if you're building customer 360 uh, you know, views, uh, essentially what we're trying to do is kind of stitch together a golden record of a customer, uh, such that we have all information, uh, be it customer profile, be it customer transactions, be it uh, the customer feedback we have got through, you know, different channels. Essentially, we want to have all of that in a single place uh, so that we are able to query that for uh, the use from different applications. So here, uh, we're going to look at, <clears throat> in specific to uh, using Confluent, uh, we're going to look at how we can move data from, uh, you know, source databases like SQL Server and uh, Oracle. So in most organizations uh, where, you know, we, we kind of work with, we see uh, SQL Server is a place where uh, you know some of uh, the customer master data is stored. So that could be you know tied to like a Microsoft Dynamics system or other CRM systems which use uh, SQL Server uh, database. Uh, in terms of uh, financial transactions, uh, we see you know some of that uh, in Oracle databases or SAP systems which are running on uh, Oracle databases. And essentially, what we want uh, to do is get that transaction information so that. Uh, we again understand uh, the customer's uh, you know interaction with our uh, you know various different business systems uh, in one single view. So with Confluent platform, uh, what we would be doing is uh, make use of what is called as connectors. So these are pre-built uh, you know a set of components which are available uh, to to be downloaded and installed. And what we could do is <clears throat> move data from some of these source databases into uh, you know confluent platform okay. so you know, the confluent cluster essentially is a place where we're going to move data from uh, all of these different databases and we're going to aggregate uh, that uh, to you know build what is called as the uh, single view of the customer so confluent platform uh, i wouldn't get into you know specific details as to you know what confluent platform is but uh, if uh, any of you are interested you can always you know uh set up a follow-up with us to you know find out more or you can uh just google for confluent and you will see uh you know some of uh the great work that our product and engineering teams have done to put together this product right so <clears throat> uh what we're going to do as part of this workshop is once we move uh, the data into the confluent platform uh we're going to make use of another component which is called as uh ksql db so you can think of it again. Uh, I don't want to use you know a lot of uh, you know terminologies over here. So just to understand, uh, data is going to flow through uh, the Confluent platform in real time, and we can think of KSQL DB as a stream uh, streaming engine which looks at data as it flows through the platform and it processes or applies some logic uh, in order for us to 
uh, generate what is called as the golden record of the customer. So you can think of it this way that every time there's a real time update on either the customer profile or the customer makes a transaction, we want that to reflect uh, immediately into the conference platform. Uh, and we want uh, to be able to build uh, the uh, customer view, uh, which reflects uh, the changes from the source side. So what we're doing is essentially propagating changes which happen at the source uh, immediately in real time and uh, letting that reflect on the uh, target side, which is uh, the customer 360 view. Right? Uh, and later on, we'll see. Uh, so once we've built that customer 360 view, uh, which is also constantly getting updated, uh, we'll also see various different applications uh, that can connect and subscribe uh, to the data which uh, is being you know, pushed into the customer 360 view. So we'll look at two different approaches. Again, we'll try to you know, compare and contrast uh, you know some of the uh, API patterns that we've done in the past. So one is uh, to go the RESTful way where we're doing a pull-based approach. The application will send in a uh, you know, request uh, to the KSQL server. Uh, you'll get the customer uh, you know, 360 view uh, for that specific customer ID uh, as a response, uh, which you can use within the application. Uh, the second approach would be that we're going to take uh, a push-based approach. So we're going to establish a connection with the uh, KSQL server. Uh, we'll pass a customer ID and say that for any changes that is happening to this specific customer, uh, I want that to reflect on my uh, application in real time. So I don't want to keep querying or polling the server for the changes. Uh, I just want to set up that connection. And every time there's a change that is being made, uh, I want to push that event onto the uh, application side. All right, so that's uh, what we'll be, you know, kind of building or working through in terms of uh, this particular workshop. Um, so I'll be, uh, um, I'll just step through, you know, what exactly we're doing in terms of again uh, setting up this pipeline, uh, setting up uh, the logic for uh, building what is called as the customer 360 view, uh, and the third would be in terms of uh, the API calls, you know, how we would, uh, you know, uh, query the uh, customer 360 view. <clears throat> All right, so just kind of, um, you know, breaking it down in terms of visuals. So if uh, we had tables which are being propagated from the source, uh, essentially they would get converted into, uh, you know, key value messages. Uh, and uh, on the uh, uh, KSQL side, we'll start looking at, uh, you know, the data which is flowing in through the Confluent platform. So here it would be, you know, multiple different tables. So uh, on the SQL Server, the customer master data, we have, say, three different tables, which is customer master, you have customer uh, address, and then you have the customer uh, phone number. So all these are different set of, um, <clears throat> you know, profile information, which is stored in multiple different tables. Um, the second would be in terms of uh, the uh, account uh, or the transaction information. Uh, that's going to come from the Oracle database, and the table structures would look like uh, you know, transaction ID, the customer ID, uh, and the account information, and the transaction amount itself. And then we would have like an account master table, which updates uh, the balance over a period of time. So from all these tables, which are, you know, being mapped from the source, uh, essentially what we want to do is kind of combine them and uh, build what is called as the uh, customer 360 view. So essentially from you know, having all these fields and multiple different tables, uh, we're gonna uh, build some logic that can stitch together data from all these different tables. And we're gonna have, uh, <clears throat> say, uh, you know, some computed values like uh, the latest balance, uh, the latest transaction amount, and maybe you know, the number of transactions that the customer has made uh, within that day or within that week and so on, right? So those are things which we can you know, put together uh, through the customer 360. All right, so before I jump into, you know, how we're gonna build this pipeline, again, I just, you know, stepping through each of the steps. Uh, so first would be to source the data. Uh, so we make use of what is called as these pre-built connectors. Uh, and essentially what we're using is a concept called as change data capture. Uh, the reason being that every time there's a change on the source side, uh, we want that to propagate uh, to the uh, confluent uh, platform. So every time an update or an insert or you know delete happens, we want that specific event to propagate to the 
uh, customer 360. So sourcing the data is the first step. So we uh, set up what is called as a Kafka Connect cluster, and then we deploy connectors that can connect to uh, each of these different types of sources. Uh, again, it's not limited with just uh, you know two different types of sources, uh, especially when you're building a use case like Customer 360. There could be uh, you know data setting in multiple different uh, you know uh, systems, and uh, you could always go to you know Confluent Hub. Uh, that's a, again a place uh, where you you can just you know access it via a browser. Uh, look for the system that you're trying to integrate uh, you know some of the customer information uh, with Confluent, uh, and then you just search if that particular uh, system already has a connector which is available for you to use. Okay. The second is uh, to build the pipeline. So essentially, what we're doing is going from uh, capturing the data from the source systems. Uh, the next step would be to, in order to build the pipeline, what we do is uh, we basically uh, write a few SQL statements. Uh, so similar to you know how you would do uh, things like joins in a relational database, uh, you would write SQL statements that can join uh, across uh, multiple different uh, streams of data which is coming in uh, via the uh, connectors. Okay? So here uh, we basically look at uh, you know, two different uh, set of streams. We have transaction stream. We have the account stream, which both are coming from, uh, you know, two different, uh, you know, systems. Uh, and what we're going to do uh, as part of the pipeline is that we're going to let the data flow through here uh, through a certain a number of processing steps, and we will propagate that finally to the customer 360 view here. So essentially, you can look at all these rectangular boxes uh, as some sort of processing step that is happening. Uh, and then you can look up, uh, look at these. Uh, I don't know what to call them, but you know the arrow-shaped boxes. Uh, they would be, uh, yeah, they basically would be, uh, you know, uh, the uh, kind of objects that we're creating uh, to uh, enrich the data from one step to the other. Okay. So once we put together this pipeline, essentially, uh, you know, we go from source data all the way to the uh, customer 360 view, which is the logic that we wanted to put. All right, so once the pipeline is set up, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, data is being captured. Uh, so all the data which is there originally within the source databases, uh, they get propagated through this pipeline. Uh, <clears throat> and that would already build the customer 360 view for uh, the data points which are already uh, there uh, in the source systems. But also what it does is that every time there's a change on the uh, source system, it would also propagate uh, those events, uh, you know, along this pipeline. So you can think of it this way: that your customer 360 view is uh, something gets, uh, you know, that gets uh, updated in real time uh, all along. <clears throat> all right. So uh, once we've set it up, uh, we're going to look at, uh, you know, two different ways of querying the data. Uh, so one is, uh, you know, a pull query. So this would be similar to, you know, what we do. Uh, in relational databases, where we, uh, you know, issue a query to the database, you get a result set back, uh, and you can probably, you know, plug that into the application. So here, <clears throat> you would get like a static uh, result set, uh, which can be, uh, you know, plugged into the application. So here, an example would be select star from the uh, customer 360 view, uh, and we specify uh, the keys. Uh, so that would be customer ID plus the account ID, right? And we get uh, the uh, results from the uh, customer 360 view. <clears throat> the second approach is in terms of push queries. Uh, so push queries would mean that I'm pushing the query to the server and it's running in the server uh, constantly. So uh, instead of getting a result set back, uh, I'm pushing the query to the server where it's running continuously. And every time there's an event which occurs on the source, it propagates through the pipeline and it will give me uh, a new event, uh, a result event uh, in the uh, results of the push query. Okay, uh, so that's uh, you know what we use to query the data. So again, uh, the pull query is something which we would use for querying data if you're using a RESTful API. So uh, if you're making a REST-based call, you would send in a request. You want to get the response back. That's something which you use the pull query for. The push query again, you establish the connection to the server every time there's an event. Uh, that occurs on the server side and gets pushed to the uh, uh, pushed to the uh, you know client side. 
And this is what we call as uh, you know, streaming uh, API. Right, so once you know all that is done we figured out you know what's the logic that we want to use within the application whether it's a rest based api or whether it's a streaming api uh, we would you know basically use that from within the uh, client so here uh, you know there are some examples of how you want to query the data with either a single key with the multiple keys uh, or if you want to you know push query and you know wait for new events on the server side right so the difference over here you'll see in the first uh, two approaches where we're using pull queries is that uh, we're making use of a call where we get a response back and uh, that's pretty much what we're doing in the push query we're going to see that you know the uh, request is sent to the server and the query gets submitted uh, but the server connection is still uh, you know kept alive uh, and we get uh, updates as and when uh, events occur on the server side All right. So before uh, you know, we get into you know where the code is available. Probably, and I'll just step through uh, you know what uh, we can do uh, in terms of the uh, setting up this whole pipeline. So <clears throat> I'll share the GitHub with uh, all of you later on if you're interested in trying it out by yourself. So, but essentially, what we're doing is we're making use of a Docker Compose file, uh, which essentially has uh, you know various different components which are needed. Uh, to run this specific workshop, right? So we have two source systems, which is an Oracle database. We have a SQL Server database. Uh, we have <clears throat> uh, Zookeeper, the broker, uh, which is you know some components which are part of the Confluent platform. Uh, if you're interested in you know kind of learning more about each of these components, uh, you can you know find a lot of information on Confluent's website, uh, or you can you know, feel free to have a chat with uh, any of us uh, later on. Uh, schema registry, uh, that's another component where uh, we kind of map the schemas from the source side uh, onto the Confluent platform. Uh, and additionally, we'll have uh, you know, uh, other components like uh, connect. Uh, so that's where the connectors get deployed so that we can capture the changes uh, from the source uh, databases. <clears throat> and we'll have what is called as KSQL DB server. Uh, that's essentially the stream, uh, stream processing engine. Uh, which is running uh, that processes data in real time as and when it flows to the Confluent platform. Right, so that's uh, in a nutshell, you know, the uh, set of components that we need uh, as part of the, uh, you know, setting up this uh, whole pipeline. So once uh, we do that, uh, additionally, uh, when I share the repo later on, uh, I just have like a script which we can, you know, quickly. Go through so you can just run the script and you would see that it executes uh you know multiple uh, different steps so all the way from you know uh, creating tables on the source side um, it would uh you know build all these uh you know all this logic for building up the customer 360 view and eventually you'll have uh, you know api calls which are being made uh which can be used to query uh the uh customer 360 view right so <clears throat> If I run all of that, uh, essentially what we get is a result for each of these queries. If everything is you know, stitched together fine, uh, the first thing that you could check, uh, we have a nice uh, you know, uh, browser-based uh, UI. Uh, so uh, to you know, kind of monitor the Confluent platform, so you can just click on, uh, <clears throat> it's called the Control Center. You can go into the Control Center, click on the cluster where we have deployed this pipeline. Uh, you can click on, <clears throat> Uh, topics so that essentially would show us uh, you know the number of uh, tables that are being captured from the source system uh, they have mapped into what is called as topics uh, and then uh, we would have what is called as KSQL DB and if we just click on that uh, and click on flow uh, we can essentially see the uh, entire pipeline uh, that I was just talking about earlier so you will see that uh, the transaction stream comes in we are creating a stream out of it. We are doing some operations in between, uh, and then finally joining up uh, everything uh, so that we get the customer 360 view, which can be used by the front end application. <clears throat> All right. Um, so, in addition to this flow, uh, we can just also step through you know, the other objects that we're creating as part of this flow, uh, which is streams and tables. Uh, essentially, the streams are uh, the processing steps 
uh, that you know kind of build up that pipeline uh, to process data in real time. And then the table is where we're going to hold uh, the you know the golden record of the customer, which is kind of stitched through, right? So the CC, uh, customer 360 view is the final table that we're going to query from uh, via the uh, API call. All right, so I'll just pause there just quickly, uh, you know, switch back to our channel just to see if there are any questions or any comments. Uh, looks okay. So hopefully people are following. Uh, otherwise, feel free to you know run this uh, by yourselves. Uh, I'll share the code later on uh, for all of you to use. <clears throat> so that's the uh, repo, and you'll find a CDC uh, or a Customer Three Hundred and Sixty uh, you know workshop in there, and you can use that to uh, run through these steps. All right. Um, uh, the last bit uh, is to basically look at if we run all this, you know, what really do we see? Uh, so what we would be able to see that uh, is we make the connections to the source systems. Uh, you know, we load data to the source systems. Uh, we deploy these connectors through which we can, um, yeah, through which we can basically, uh, you know, tap the data from the sources, uh, and then we step through. Uh, the SQL statements, uh, which kind of stitches together uh, the data. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, once the customer 360 view is built, uh, we'll see that we can query that <clears throat> using two different methods. One is the uh, RESTful method where we are sending in a request, get back the response. So we'll see here you know, how we can query using a pull query, uh, using you know an API call. And then we'll see you know how uh, we query uh, the system for continuous uh, data to be delivered. So the streaming API way, uh, that would be the second method uh, through which we query the uh, data. And we see that for every event on the source side, which is being updated, you would see an update on the uh, target side as well. All right, so that's pretty much what I wanted to walk through in terms of uh, the workshop uh, today. Uh, essentially, uh, what we've looked at is, you know, how uh, you know we differentiate between what is called as uh, REST API versus a streaming API, and in order to build uh, event-driven APIs, uh, you know, we just saw an example which is Customer 360 uh, in real time, and uh, you know how that updates uh, events that can get propagated from uh, you know source systems all the way through. A pipeline through which a certain set of processing happens and then eventually uh, gets updated in a uh, customer 360 view. All right, so that's my time. And uh, those who made uh, you know, time out of your busy schedules for attending this, you know, thanks uh, for that. And uh, in case if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to uh, reach out to the organizers and they'll put uh, you in touch with us. Uh, or what you can do is uh, if you try running the uh, workshop through the repo that I've sh shared uh, earlier, and if you have um, you know, any questions on that, uh, feel free to, uh, in GitHub, you can create issues uh, through which you can you know, post questions, and then we can, um, you know, I, I can you know, probably look at that uh, you know, at some point, uh, and uh, we can you know, probably have a conversation there as well. <clears throat> 